Hello and welcome back to my studio. I'm Gina and in today's video I'm going to be tackling something a little bit different. In my quest for learning and wanting to try new things I've been researching on YouTube and watching some amazing artists who take basically rubbish or trash or more importantly plastic rubbish and trash and turn it into these amazing sculptural builds and so I wanted to take a little bit of a flavor of that and give that a go so what I'm going to do is actually take a whole lot of pens and I had kept a lot I don't know I think I, I was collecting them not really collecting them I'm not really too sure anyway I had a bunch of pens um, from you know hotels that I'd stayed at or you know conferences that I've gone to and they always have these goodie bags and there's always a pen in them so I had a heap of them and so I actually took apart all the ones that no longer worked and so that's what I've got uh, a bunch of these pen parts that I'm going to look to create some steampunk weapons. I'm not really too sure where these are going to go at the moment but it's one of those things that I had in my head that I just needed to get out and as I start to do things the project or whatever this project is going to be starts to formulate so I've got a couple of ideas that are already starting to percolate away and hopefully that will come into some sort of idea or anything like that. I just kind of liken it to a little bit of a whisper at the moment. We're not really sure on what it is that the creative juices are telling me or the magic that's telling me. So I'm really keen to kind of explore this a little bit further and just see where it goes. So hopefully you enjoy and let's get started. So these are all the pen bits that I've managed to salvage. Most of them are the internal workings of the pen as well as the little clickers at the top and the tips of the pens as well. So they're going to make up the bulk of the uh, of the weapons. And then also for our, in New Zealand everyone will be familiar with a big pen and I'm sure that they're called something else throughout out the world. But it's the little clicker at the top of the pen and I'm just going to use those as the handle and trigger piece. Uh, which because they're just absolutely the perfect shape. I didn't have to do anything about it. You can see it just there in the blue. Absolutely perfect. It is one of the most simplest pieces that I was able to salvage and it just works perfectly. Okay, so owning up here, I don't just use pen pieces for this build. I am using a hair tie to add this pipe detail or tube detail that is going to give the illusion of more of a steampunk type of feel. And then just adding a little bit of wire here just to attach that top piece to the actual gun itself with the different plastics meant that things dried or attached differently. And then I'm using some decorative pieces here that I had in my bits box. I'm using some domes that I also had. And just to add in some additional details to add it to make it look more like a steampunk weapon. I've also got some little diamante uh, pieces as well. I think these are quite small. I'm not too sure what the size of them are. But they make for great rivet details. Moving on to the second weapon, I am. this is going to be a smaller one and I'm just using again mostly pen pieces and just with a couple of extra decorative pieces just to add in a bit more detail into it as well. Keeping with all of the pen bits, this is actually the spring out of one of the pens and it actually adds a nice little detail to the end of the weapon. Moving on to the larger one, this was the most fun one to put together so I've left the best one to last and it really was quite a challenge but I just knew that that main blue piece was 
it had just such fantastic detail and it was the inner workings of one of our one of the I think it was an office max pen and it just had some great detail on it as well so again using that little trigger piece out of the Bic Biro and it's starting to come together <music> go that's all the three put together now and but they're looking a little bit colorful and not quite steampunk ish so a good coat of a gray primer does the trick and then I'm actually because I don't actually have any black primer I'm actually having to go over and give them a coat of black paint as well uh, this is just to add in all of the shadows and making sure that when I do go through and, and paint it it's got a really good base to it as well For the actual painting I'm going to be using metallics, so a mix of silver, uh, gold, bronze and copper. And I'm just going to start with the silver because it's the lightest one and one I can easily paint over if I'm not too happy with where the placement is. I don't really have a plan as such, I'm just going to sort of colour block things out and then I'll come back in and add some detail. One thing I do notice as I sort of go through this process is that I end up by painting a couple of things out just so that nothing really stands out and everything kind of feels like it has its rightful place. So that was one of the most important things for me when I was looking at painting. So yeah, let's let's have a look to see how it all comes together. Here I've just mixed a bit of copper with a bit of brown paint just to try and mute down the metallicness of the paint just to, to give it a little bit of definition so I can get into more of the deeper recesses of this particular piece and then it just adds a little bit more definition as I come back in with the copper to actually help with uh, some of those additional details.
So one last step to actually bring all of the colours, all the different colours together is to put a wash over the entire thing. This just adds a layer of grime and dirt but actually it all helps blend everything together. So if anything was particularly standing out this will definitely help soften it all, all up. So I just have a mix of water and acrylic paint. I don't use an oil wash. I haven't quite got into that yet, but maybe in the future I'll definitely be looking at that. And then I just very lightly dab off anything that's starting to pull anywhere, just to make sure that it, I get a nice even coat of the wash over it as best I possibly can. So once that's all dry, once the wash is all dry, I'm just going to go and mix up a little bit of silver with a little bit of gold just to try and mute down the silver. And I'm just going to do a really light dry brush over some of the higher, higher areas just to try and highlight them. So I'm not necessarily going over the entire piece. And this is a really subtle highlight and I'm really stoked with how it's turned out it just adds a little bit of more wear and tear or the illusion of more wear and tear onto onto each piece So there you go, they're all finished and I really hope that you enjoyed that. It was really fun trying to work out how all these different pieces come together to make a sort of cohesive story. So even looking at them, you know exactly what they are. Also painting the project was really fun as well. If you have liked this video, consider hitting that like button. It really does help the channel a lot. And also, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, turn that bell notification on so that you know when the next video is coming up. And also, I've added a couple more videos at the end here that I think that you might like. And until next time, I will see you then.